In this video, we are going to look at how we can use resonance to determine the stability of a given set of molecules. So what we have out here are three different anions and we need to figure out which amongst these would be the most stable. So how do we do that? Let's start by looking at this particular anion. Well out here I have this oxygen atom and this oxygen atom has this lone pair of electrons but this oxygen atom is connected to a single bond, right? Now this doesn't follow any of our resonance patterns that we have seen earlier. For the lone pair of this oxygen to resonate, it has to be attached to either some double bond or an empty orbital, right? So the lone pair of this oxygen atom are going to stay 100% over this oxygen atom. They are what we call localized electrons. They are localized over the oxygen atom. On the other hand, if you look at this particular anion, then out here this oxygen atom is connected to a double bond, right? So this perfectly fits into a resonance picture and one of these lone pair of the oxygen atom can resonate with this pi bond. One of these lone pair can come over here while these pi electrons can move over to this carbon atom, right? So this will lead to the formation of a new resonating structure that's going to look something like this will have a new double bond out here and because this pi electrons moves over to this carbon atom so there will be a new lone pair over this carbon which will also lead to the formation of a minus one formal charge over this carbon atom right now because this lone pair is connected to a single bond so it can't resonate further but because it's connected to this double bond so it can definitely resonate back so it can resonate with this pi bond it can resonate back and this will give us our original molecule right so what's happening is that this lone pair of electrons as well as these pi electrons they are not confined or we should say localized to this oxygen atom and this carbon carbon bond but in fact they are delocalized over this whole system right so therefore in reality this molecule that's given this anion is actually not going to be like this in reality it's actually going to be a mixture of both of these resonating structures it's going to be a hybrid of both of these structures and it's going to look something like this now if you notice in the resonance hybrid i have drawn a partial negative charge over the oxygen atom now this should make sense because this lone pair of the oxygen atom it's getting pushed into the system so it's going away from this oxygen atom it doesn't stay purely over this oxygen atom all the time so therefore this oxygen should not have a full minus one formal charge the formal charge should be lower than minus one so this oxygen will only have some partially negative formal charge right now this delocalization also leads to the formation of a negative charge over this carbon atom so our resonance hybrid should also have some partial negative over this carbon atom right so to summarize what's happening is that because of this delocalization because of this redistribution of electron density this negative charge that was present over the oxygen atom spreads out and gets shared between both the oxygen as well as the carbon atom so if you compare this molecule and this one, then out here, this negative charge is purely localized over this oxygen atom, right? So there's a high charge density over this oxygen. So therefore, if we now throw some H plus ions, if we react these molecules with some H plus, then because this oxygen atom has a high charge density, so therefore, it's going to react much more with this H plus ions compared to the atoms in this molecule. Out here, both the oxygen as well as the carbon atom has a much lower charge density and therefore, it's much less reactive to this H plus, right? So therefore, to summarize, because of this delocalization, the negative charge over the oxygen atom gets distributed throughout the system, leading to a decrease in the charge density, which is charge per unit volume, which makes this molecule much more stable and therefore much less reactive, right? So therefore, 2 is going to be definitely more stable compared to 1. 
Now, if we come to this particular molecule, this oxygen is connected to this double bond. So this can definitely resonate and this will lead to the formation of a new resonating structure that's going to look like this. But this time, because this lone pair on this carbon atom is connected to another double bond, so we can also have a resonance between this lone pair and this pi electrons. These pi electrons are going to come and shift to this carbon atom. So this time I'll have one more resonating structure that's going to look like this, right? So therefore, in reality, this anion, in reality, it's actually going to be a hybrid of all of these three structures. And in reality, it's going to look something like this, right? Now, as you can see, this negative charge is being spread out even more in this particular molecule. The negative formal charge is in fact carried over three atoms out here compared to only two atoms as in this molecule. So therefore, the charge density for this molecule is going to be even lower, making it more stable and therefore less reactive, right? So three is definitely going to be the most stable of these three ions. So therefore, the key takeaway out here is that a greater delocalization will ultimately lead to a lower charge density, thereby making the molecule more stable and therefore less reactive, right? Now, a greater delocalization also means more number of resonating structures we had three resonating structures for this particular molecule and only two for this one. So therefore, we can now go ahead and make a rule. We can say that greater the number of resonating structures, greater the number of resonating structures for a given molecule, greater will be the stability of the molecule, right? Now that you have understood how stability works, which amongst these three do you think will be the most stable? Well, I'm sure you must have guessed it by now. It's going to be this one, right? We can draw loads of resonating structures for this molecule. This pi bond can shift over here. So we can get, so we can get a resonating structure that's going to look like this. And then this pi bond can move over here and so on and so forth, right? However, if we look into this particular molecule, we can only have one other resonating structure in which this pi bond is going to shift over here. So we can only have one other resonance structure for this particular molecule. So therefore, because the delocalization is going to be lower out here compared to this, there has to be a pi bond in this compared to this. So this is going to be more stable compared to this one. Right now out here, this cation, the empty orbital of this cation is connected to single bond, right? There aren't any double bonds out here. So resonance can't happen out here. So this is going to be the least stable of these three. So one is going to be more stable than two and two is going to be more stable than three. One final question, which of these two do you think will be more stable? The phenoxide ion or the acetate ion? The answer to this question can actually be found in the next video. But before you check that out, be sure to give this a thought and be ready for some surprises.